So now she wants to start walking. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about slaves and masters. Oh man, <laughs> here he goes. So who here listens to my podcast? All right. So you guys are used to me by now, right? Yeah. Um, I get called everything in the book, right? Racist. I had one of my childhood friends come to my office a couple weeks ago, arguing with me that I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> he said, how can you say you're not black? I said, I was gifted with the gift of vision. <laughs> and uh, so what winds up happening is, people identify themselves too often in relationship to how they see themselves compared to other people, okay? So let me say that in a different way. I am a product of some comparison to somebody else. If I'm by myself, therefore, I am useless, I am worthless, because I have nobody to compare myself to. If I hang out with a bunch of strong people, I think that I am weak. If I hang out with a bunch of weak people, I think I'm strong. So when you have what is called a slave morality, you falsely define who you are, your worth, your accomplishments as a condition of things that are completely out of your control. Not only are they not in your control, but you are also not accountable for that. So what it does is it removes the accountability for you guys to improve individually, and it falsely thinks that your sense of value, your power, right? We use power a lot here, right? White boy Pat says white power, which is different. We're working on that. We're working on that. Right? But you lose the accountability for making yourself powerful. So in the world of the slave morality, right? In the world of the slave mentality, we could say. Right? Mindset. We think that there is good and evil. When we're slaves, we're not masters. And for those of you that think this somehow refers to, you know, a couple hundred years ago or in the South and, you know, Africa going to, to southern, the southern states of the Union, like, slavery has been around a long time. Slavery still exists. Slavery still is going on, uh, still going on now around the world. So, open your mind. When you're a slave, we believe in good and evil. It's good if it helps us. It's evil if it's what the masters do. Because they define themselves in terms of another group of people. That other group represents the opposite of who they see themselves as. So slave mentality, slave morality, slave mindset dictates that when somebody is an owner of a business, he's all about money. When somebody proclaims their pride and their identity, they must hate them. You can't say you love you because that means you hate me because we're different. These are all products of the filter of a slave's mindset. When you're a master, there is no good or evil. There's good or bad. It's good or bad. You wake up, it's sunny, that's good. You wake up, it's raining, that's bad. There's no other identity or no other entity that gets to dictate how they feel about themselves. They are completely accountable 
for their sense of self-worth, for their aspirations, for their failures, for their accomplishments. Unfortunately, most of us are not raised with a master's mindset. So what happens is, whenever we feel down in the dumps, what do we do? We start hanging out with people that don't pressure us. We start going to environments whose standards aren't as high. We lower the pressure around us because that makes us feel more powerful. Hey, at least I'm not that guy. When you have a master's morality, you only want to be in a room with strong people because you know their strength can do nothing but help you. That's yours. <laughs> so, I put up a picture today on Facebook that talks about people's need to be complimented. Anybody see that today? Right? And the, the metaphor I used was, you know, a dog, when we want to train a dog, we tell him to sit and we give him a treat. Good dog. Dog loves it. After a while, you don't even need to give him the treat. You just say, sit. And your approval alone is the treat that the dog needs and longs for. Right? Well, when we do things and we need to be complimented by other people, you are nothing more than a dog waiting for somebody to give you a treat for something that they approve of. They wouldn't be complimenting you if they didn't approve of what you had just done. And what winds up happening is the more you rely on those compliments, and those compliments could be, you know, verbal compliments, they could be liking your Facebook post, right? I don't know what I'm going to do today. These people just don't know. <laughs> Who likes my post? How can, you, how can you like my post? Right? That's the, the society we live in now. This is how these, these concepts are being applied to how we live now, right? But these concepts have always existed. When you're somebody who relies on the approval of another person, you are only ever going to be limited to somebody else's opinion and value for you. If somebody hates you, they hate you. If somebody insults you, it doesn't mean you need to be offended. An insult is an act done by somebody. Becoming offended is an act that you react to that act with. Nobody can offend me unless I choose to be offended. If somebody can say something to me. Who here thinks they can't be offended? Come here, Dan. So, how long have you been fat? <laughs> I don't know, how long have I been fat? <laughs> I was back then. Long time. Long time. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> how many people made fun of you for your weight growing up? How many people did it make fun of you? Alright, so, uh, have you ever lost a fight? Oh yeah. So why did you start training? So I was, it was, to, to be honest, at first to defend myself. Right. I got tired of getting my ass whooped. You know why I started training? Because I kept getting in trouble for whooping people's asses. <laughs> so to me, I think that's why you should train martial arts. If you're weak, um, I think what you should do is probably spend time befriending people like me. Absolutely. <laughs> and this is a very mild assessment of, of what I can get into. The first thing he did when I asked him how fat, uh, uh, you know, how long he's been fat, what did he do? He recruited somebody else. It was 
me and him. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it became me, him, and his dad. Mm -hmm. When I said, how long have you been fat? Or I, if, if anybody's ever made fun of you for being fat, he said, who hasn't made fun of me? Do you know people who are friends of yours that never made fun of you? Everybody, nobody had respect for you. Does anybody believe that? So when we make these broad assessments, who did make fun of me? People never met, never met you, never made fun of you, right? The guy you were uh, paying for a, a meal at his restaurant didn't make fun of you. You know, the, the bus driver, you know, you swiped the metro car, didn't make fun of you. Right? The mailman didn't make fun of you. You know, I got a letter here for a fat motherfucker. <laughs> that right <laughs> so what happens is like people say you know people ask me now because I competed you know MMA at 170 I competed powerlifting 275 and they say well you know why are you so heavy and I say I'm stronger than anybody you know yeah but don't you want to lose weight if I did I'd be less you don't have any abs you don't have any power. <laughs> How often do you train though? I'm a black belt. I'm gonna win every single exchange because nobody defines my identity. How I see myself. You know you're short. Yeah, you know what? My whole life my feet seem to manage to touch the floor. <laughs> There's a way we can look at life where we dictate our value and the only person that gets access to that definition is ourselves. Why don't people from different cultures get along in an organic state? Because too many people see themselves as reflections of other people. Because they do this and I do this, we can't be around each other. And that is weak. Right? That's supposed to be, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be the racist guy, right? I'm not supposed to say that. I'm not supposed to say different cultures can live side by side. Well, in application, it's a different conversation. But if we're talking about master morality, why does one person's customs, assuming that they don't infringe upon somebody else's, what does it matter what they're doing? You know, MC, I joined with this guy, with Charlie, and Charlie got his blue belt already. I still don't have my blue belt. I said, what the hell does Charlie have to do with you? But we train every day. I've been here as long as he has. We take the same number of classes. There's even some times I've been here before him. So it's like this individual is defining his value in terms of Charlie. How many guys, and be honest, how many guys at one point, early on, you don't do it anymore because now you're perfect, but early on at some point, were like, man, how did he get promoted and I didn't get promoted? Look, all the guys I've seen at Bell's are being honest. The rest of them are like, I'm the most humble dude up in this room. <laughs> so what winds up happening is you get to the point where when you're in a room full of people, and the people who are in Warrior Elite, right, my fighters, the guys that spend the most time with me one-on-one -on -one in, small, in a small group, there's some things that just don't go. There's some things that just don't fly. The emotion, the leakage, the complaining. You know, we have a couple of different schools over the years that, you know, I've, that were allies that I've befriended and we've cross-trained. That's one of the things that is always, that my guys are always asking about. And not that these other schools don't have talented fighters, but it's MC, why are they always getting water? MC, why is he always complaining that he's tired? MC, why is he making those sounds and I didn't even hit him? <laughs> <laughs> right, in Sayak Kali, there's a concept called leakage that I learned. And what leakage is, is displaying emotion. 
right? You, you need to display emotion. And most people think it's, you know, it's me just working some stuff out. What they don't realize is when you exhibit leakage, you are communicating to somebody else, take it easy. You're the alpha. All right, you got it. You're the man. Take it easy on me. Now, how does that happen? They say, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'm cramping. Oh, give me a second. Oh, I need some water. Oh, I think I left my car open. <laughs> right? This is how it winds up sounding. But the communication, behavior-wise, is take it easy. You got it. When I say it that way, it puts it in a different perspective for people. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. Unless you do. Right? Unless you do. Slaves enjoy being slaves. Because they don't know what it's like to be a master. Slaves don't become masters because they think masters are evil. Power, accountability, accomplishment, ambition. Right? Responsibility. All these things are evil. Because these are the things that masters embrace. I'm a slave, I'm a victim. I can't be powerful. Why? Because of the masters. That's not how strong people operate. Now, by the way, this is no man-woman thing. This is no young-old thing. This is, you know, don't put any labels on, on this that don't belong. This is you. Every individual one of you has this struggle going on in their minds every single second of every day. Am I going to complain? Am I going to be weak? Am I going to say I didn't get it because of somebody else? Why didn't you get the promotion? Oh, because this guy plays favorites. Did you know that you just find out he plays favorites? No, he's always been like that. So why didn't you get the promotion? When you stop making excuses, you actually put yourself for the first time in a position where you start looking for solutions. As soon as you take the accountability and you put it over there, well, you just gave away the lab. You just gave away the, the, the place where we find out where the answers are. And you threw it on somebody else's lap. Why? Because you're probably too weak to handle it. And if you say anything else, you're lying to yourself. And if you say that around me, I'm going to tell you you're lying to yourself. And when I tell you you're lying to yourself, or a strong environment starts telling you you're lying to yourself, you do two things. You either get stronger or you quit. All right? Thanks for the talk, guys.